Hey coach, can you just talk quickly about losing Rashad's samples to Oregon and what that's done for you trying to find a new coach? Yeah, no doubt. Rashad's a really good football coach, really good person. Uh, respect him a lot, what he did for our program, building, uh, you know, getting the program back off the ground uh, when we took over. So wish him nothing but the best. He's with some really good people at a really good place. He's an assistant head coach again, uh, which is what he wanted to be. So he got a, you know, that, that job title promotion and I'm happy for him. For us here, uh, interviewing coaches. We're getting there. I'm trying to help out a little bit with wideouts. We got a guy, Brady White, who played here, played for me in Memphis, super bright, who's helping us as well. So, uh, you know, we're plugging along, getting better. Has, it, has that process been going on going this week to find a coach? It has, it has. Unfortunately, it started on Sunday, which was my dad's birthday, which was un <laughs> unfortunate. But uh, yeah, it started, uh, really it started last Friday. And, uh, you know, just putting the names that I have you know, I always have a list of names of people that we're going to look at if a job opens for every position. So then it's okay. You take those lists of names and they're all in different circumstances. So maybe you haven't updated it in two months. Oh, well, that guy got a job here now, so that guy's out. Out. This guy's here, this guy's there, and then you kind of put it together. And uh, then you create a final five. We talked to six guys this week already. Uh, so we're in a good spot. Hopefully we'll be able to make a move here in the next week, if not sooner. So you're close. Right. Yeah, I feel like we've narrowed the list down to a few guys, and we're, we're very, very close. What about Shane okay. Rashada? He's out there on the field now. Yeah, he's throwing the ball again. Uh, he got cleared to do that. No 11-on-11, 11 11, but he can go out there and do some 7-on-7 seven seven stuff. Great to get him those reps. Uh, you know, he's done a good job working to get back to put himself in position to do that. So kudos to Jaden for putting in the work necessary to put himself on the field in the 7-on-7 seven seven settings uh, for these last two weeks. What kind of impact can you see Deron Reynolds uh, make on the defensive line since he got here? Yeah, he's a phenomenal football coach. I mean, absolutely phenomenal football coach. And I think the respect level the guys have for him, you can see them playing. You can see him. 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 And when he speaks, they listen. And I think that's a really, you know, whether you're 55, whether you're 18, you know, if you show that you can teach people something, and they can learn and get better, they're gonna listen. And I think he's showing those guys that they can learn and get better. Is it nice to have that really expansive depth, just around 20 players for the cream really to rise to the top? 100%, you know, with the competition. Without competition, uh, you know, how much better are you actually gonna get? Everybody is internally motivated to an extent, but the internal motivation combined with the external motivation, uh, you know, everybody's internally motivated to be the best version of them, that's what everybody says, that's what's on windows and that's what's on posters and uh, that's what you want but the reality is it's hard to get people to be that internally motivated so when you get the external motivation uh, motivation of having depth and that pushing you it's just another another avenue to make our guys better did Jason surpass your expectations from getting back this early he did he did he surpassed you know we were we're on the front side of it uh, just because you know he's done a good job with rehab and, and getting back this is what, practice number eight, Coach? Or practice how, do you feel, eight. how do you feel where you're at right now? Yeah, I mean, we're heading in the right direction. I'm always really going to say that. Uh, you don't know. You know, we are a more talented team than last year. But in the day and age of college football, every you don't really – it's harder to assess how talented your opponents are. So, yeah, we may be more talented, but with the current age of college football, every team in the Power 5, Power 4 should be more talented because of the way the transfer portal works. So it's like, okay, in the new era of college football, where do we sit? I know where we would have sit in the old era, two years ago, right? Even last year, a little bit as it started to, you know, the first big year of huge portal. Uh, but we're a way better football team. How that stacks up, I'm excited to see. I feel good. Very good. Like, they're, they're both really talented players. Uh, that's why we signed them, and it shows up, and they're competitive. And that's what you look for is, you know, I had a coach tell me the other day, he goes, man, this entire position group is competitive. They love ball. Awesome. That's what we're recruiting to. We're recruiting people who love ball and want to be at Arizona State. We are never going to trick somebody to come here. Never going to lie to somebody to come here. I want people who want to be here. And those people are going to be people from Texas, California, Hawaii, maybe Arizona. That's not my choice. That's other kids. I don't care. We're going to win. We're going to win here. That is going to happen. I can guarantee it. Whether we win with the kid from five miles away or we want the kid from 300 miles away. I would love to do it with the kid like me, born and raised here. That's not my choice, but we will win. And we're going to win with people who want to be Sun Devils and who want to be here 
for the long run. Coach, can you talk about necessarily the development of the secondary as a whole over the course of really throughout the spring camp? Obviously, Coach Carrington is not even more used to her It seems like this group is slightly younger than last year. What can you necessarily say about the development of that? Yeah, uh, they're getting better every day, and they're listening and hearing coaching. You know, I think when you're young, it's really hard. There's a difference between, you know, listening and hearing. If you hear, okay, you heard it, and then you forget it. If you're listening, you're trying to apply it. It was just like I was over there with the White House today. We're doing a drill, and it was, okay, why are we doing this drill? Great, you guys did this. How do you apply it, and when do you use it? Right, if you don't know how to apply and when to use something, what's the purpose of knowing how to do the actual skill set? There is no point. You have to know when you use it, how you use it, why you use it, in order to actually take the skill and take what we're practicing uh, to camp down. Coach, speaking of the secondary, you're talking about Xavier and Alfred, he hasn't played the past few seasons. How excited are you to have him back in this season? Awesome. Zay's been a leader for us. Uh, he's been a guy who's every day brought it. He's set a standard for our team. Uh, really happy we have Zay. He's had a wild journey to get here. A wild journey since he's been here. And he keeps overcoming the adversity. And, uh, you know, that's really what's going to define us this year is how we respond to adversity. Yeah. Do you think Shamari has been one of those true veterans necessarily in the secondary group? Obviously with guys like Dan and Terrence. Do you feel like there's been new leaders really developing in that position? 100%. I think our entire team is filled with new leaders. You know, I think anytime you're in year one, it's hard for a new guy to overtake the leadership that somebody had in the past. Right? That's hard. It's hard to transfer leadership when the old leadership is present. Right? Very difficult. So I think now that a lot of the guys, you know, that were the leaders of the past are gone, it allows those opportunities for the new, the new era to step up and lead. And I think you're seeing those guys be more comfortable in leadership roles because of that. How's the quarterback room shaking out? Competitive. You know, it's going back and forth. Uh, getting Jane back in the mix will be a, will be a good thing for us in the next few weeks. I mean, today was our probably our worst practice, and it still wasn't bad. I mean, it's not, it wasn't good by any means. And when I say bad, I mean relative to a bad standard. Like, it's bad for us. But a lot of people would have come out here and said, okay, that was an okay practice. For us, that was a bad practice, right? Especially on defense. Offense whooped their butt all day. Offense had a pretty good day. Good day. Defense, you know, when you bring it up on me at the end of the day and you say, oh, let's do one more rep. Well, you haven't won one all day. So what's one more guy? That's not how the game works. One more quarter, one more play, one more, no, it's over. The game ended. You had your chance, you lost. You had a bad day. Respond, get better, stop complaining. Stop doing all the stuff that you do, pity pouty. Go get better from today. Come back Saturday, let's have a great day. What makes a good practice versus a bad practice? Back and forth, energy, physicality, chasing the ball, communication. I, I, could, I could close my eyes and probably tell you how we're practicing. You could close your eyes and listen to a defensive close call or the offense's cadence and then the collision of pads. And if I close my eyes and I heard that, I should be able to see what formation it is. I should be able to see where all the defensive players should be based off, I know our offensive defense, so I should be able to say, oh, it's trips right and they're making this call on defense. I should be able to picture it. And then I should be able to feel, was that runner pass? And I should be able to feel it. And today wasn't like that. Today, one side of the ball, I couldn't know what's going on. The other side of the ball, I wouldn't. Yeah, the inability to unlock during the practice by the defense, is that leadership? Is that, like, what do you put into that? Yeah, I mean, I got to do a better job getting them out of it, right? Myself, our staff has to do a better job with the woe is me and getting those guys to snap out of it. Okay, okay. Complaining doesn't solve the problem. What solves the problem? Doing your job as hard as you can and communicating. That's what fixes adversity. The most adverse moments, what do you do? You do your job as hard as you can, and you repeat. And if we get that trend in our mind that the biggest play of the game, when you're down 21, it's not about who can wave the towel and go, oh, 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 oh all that crap. It's about who does their job as hard as they can and communicates it to their teammates. And if we get 11 people doing that in adverse moments, we're going to respond to adversity. If we don't, we won't. And that's kind of what we're trying to get to this spring and this fall. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thank you.